Sonic, get up. We need to make a video. Seeing as the next few videos are taking a while to make and nobody seems to really care about Pac-Man, I thought I'd take a break and talk about my favorite boy in blue. Well, I'll talk about him another day. That's right, we're talking about Sonic, and there's nobody else online that loves him more than me. Not scientifically possible. As a kid, the world of Sonic always fascinated me. It's funny how the naivety of being young helps you appreciate more of your favorite characters since you don't fully understand what's going on. I used to be one of those kids who would think about what characters did in their spare time. Did Sonic have to constantly fight off Robotnik? Did Sonic travel to other parts of the world, and how long did his adventures take? Nowadays, we have answers to most, if not all, those questions, and a lot of the guesswork is fleshed out in comics, movies, and animated shorts we get with Mania, Adventures, and Origins. But that last question, how long did his adventures take, was one I always thought about but never really entertained due to thinking how stupid it was. But after bringing up that question in Discord, a lot of my friends said it was a great topic. So today we're going to break it down zone by zone. I think it's also good to mention that just because you can beat Act 1 of Green Hill in 20 seconds, and the world record has the game beaten in like 14 minutes, it obviously doesn't mean that's how long it took Sonic in-universe. Think of it like a film. Just because the first Sonic movie is an hour and 39 minutes long, that doesn't mean the entire movie actually happened in that time frame. There are cuts from one scene to another that can span minutes, hours, or even days. The movie, much like the game, is showing us the most relevant and fun parts of his adventure. So the time it takes Sonic to leave Green Hill and get into Marble Zone could be a lot longer than we think. And lastly, some might reason, why would it take Sonic so long to reach Robotnik in the first place? My reasoning for that is quite simple. Sonic is busy saving his animal buddies along the way. It's clear that while Sonic could catch up to him in no time flat, there's no point in stopping Robotnik if all his friends are turned into robots. And while a fair amount of people hate Lost World, I think it's accurate to Sonic's personality to save his animal buddies first. Although I do find it funny that technically he never saves them in the intro, so Roger's take is kind of the most accurate. I'll save those animals! Yes! I saved the animals! Sorry for the long explanation, but I just want you to understand my train of thought for this video. I can imagine Sonic getting some food, hey don't judge him, he's an Aldi's man, and then going for a pre-afternoon jog to say hi to his animal buddies. As he runs through the tropical side of South Island, he admires the checkered hills, palm trees, waterfalls, and long open stretches where he can really let loose with his speed. Green Hill Zone, no matter its iteration, always looks beautiful. And in the case for Sonic 1, it's safe to assume this zone would take place at noon when the sun is at its highest. This is evident by how bright and vibrant the location is, with the water glimmering, shadows for bits of ground recessed in walls, and overhang of the lush yet neatly trimmed grass that casts shadows on the side of the ground. I know I said noon a moment ago, but it could be closer to like 11.30 due to the angle of which the light hits the environment. If you know anything about lighting and shading and artwork, you can see it in play right here. All in all, it's a quick little afternoon romp for the hedgehog. So let's mark Green Hill as taking place at noon. The transition from Green Hill to Marble Zone must have taken a few hours, as by this point in the game, the sky has darkened, but not too much. I can imagine Sonic, still fresh from his current adventure, starting to notice more caution must be taken when treading these ruins that house lava, tight spaces, and a dungeon full of traps. While there is no middle ground between zones, I can imagine the palm trees becoming few in number, with pine taking its place, the fresh scent of the ocean air being replaced with a more smoky one, and the ground while still covered in grass, has become a lot less stable. I can comfortably set this time around the late afternoon, probably 5 p.m., but considering you spend most of the act underground, I wouldn't blame you for thinking this took place at night. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the grass, because this is the last time Sonic will touch any in the game. And with that said, let's put Marble Zone at 5 p.m. I like it, but I like it. 
like chicken, the chicken, finger licking. Guess chicken. who's back with dinner? Who's back with dinner? Who's back with dinner? Turkey ham. <laughs> By this point in the game, Sonic has left the ruins of Marble Zone and is now in the mountainous region of Spring Yard Zone. With the purple glow of an urban environment, rocky mountains, and thick green bushes at its base, there's a lot to take in. While it may not be intentional, it's cool to see the same mountains from Marble Zone, but now significantly closer as Sonic progresses onward. Looking at the purple sky, yellowish-orange clouds, and hard shadows on the mountains, it's safe to assume we're approaching the evening. More specifically, the sunset at around 7 p.m. While I would love to calculate the geographical positioning of South Island and go into depth with its environment, I don't have time for that. So, here's the TLDR. The fact there are no snow levels in Sonic 1 and how most continents in the south are close to the equator, I'd like to think it's a fairly warm region with its sunsets being around 7 o'clock. I tried using parts of South America for reference and eventually found a sunrise to sunset chart but after spending an embarrassing long time reading into this, it honestly doesn't matter. All I can say is Sonic Origins, while flawed in some aspects, does a great job of visualizing this in the island viewer, clearly putting South Island, well, in the south. Geographical rant aside, it's only fair we put Spring Yard Zone at 7pm. Making his way out of the suburban mountainside, Sonic now finds himself in the ruins of an underground cavern littered with the ruins of an ancient civilization. There's plenty of traps akin to Marble Zone, and now Sonic's biggest threat, water. Now we face a small roadblock with this zone. We never see the surface. Everything in Labyrinth Zone is underground, and I'm not going to try to explain where the light sources come from. All I can say is, if we read between the lines and use some context clues with the next zone, we can make a safe estimate on what time to place this zone. So, while it may not make sense now, I'm going to put Labyrinth Zone at 9pm. So with that, onward to... Starlight Zone lives up to its name right off the bat with a beautiful starry sky as a backdrop and a highway over top the urban environment. We can see how Sonic has progressed on his journey by examining his surroundings once again. The purple mountains of Marble Zone later became the ones we see in Spring Yard, and the city in the distance of Spring Yard later became the Starlight Zone. No doubt with a starry sky like this, it's safe to assume it's currently around 11pm or midnight, and I'm sure getting through Labyrinth Zone was no easy feat and it took Sonic a hot minute to get through. Earlier I said Labyrinth was set at 9pm, and my reasoning is the difference in time from Spring Yard's sunset to Starlight's night sky, which would nestle this zone comfortably in the evening range. Now with Starlight out of the way, that leaves us with... Scrap Rain Zone takes place in the vicinity of Robotnik's headquarters. I can imagine Sonic leaving the bright and cheerful city limits of Starlight Zone, only to witness the sky turn an ugly brown as factories take up more and more of the remaining space. With smog in the sky, red lights of surveillance, and plenty of unexpected traps, this is one abomination you want to steer clear of. What's notable is how Act 1 takes place outside, and Act 2 takes place inside of Robotnik's factory. Again, a nice bit of environmental storytelling showing Sonic's progress thus far. So what time does Scrap Brain take place in? Well, at first I was conflicted when I first thought of this video. I wanted to have it set at midnight. But after analyzing the other levels and how Starlight takes place at the latest point in the evening, I'm confident in putting Scrap Brain around the 5 to 6 a.m. time frame right as the sun is about to rise. My reason for this? Well, after looking at the environment, the outside of Scrap Brain is obviously very dark, but there's still enough scattered light to show the silhouettes of buildings. That's because of the pollution in the air blocking out the sunlight, aka smog. I mean, after looking up some photos of smoggy cities online, it's actually quite eerie how well they've managed to capture the look and feel. Sure, this could be due to graphical limitations, but I like to think Sonic's pulled an all-nighter, and determined to avenge his friends unjustly captured, he runs into the final zone and puts a stop to Robotnik once and for all. Standing victorious, Sonic looks over the horizon watching Eggman go down in flames. So this is Sonic, bro, you're too close to the impact zone, stop looking your <laughs> And with that said, we can put Scrap Brain at 5am. But just because we beat the game doesn't mean time has stopped yet. Once we get back to the end, we see Sonic running to Green Hill and letting the Emeralds free while that sneaky 7th one was busy in a bar or something. 
One thing to note is how it's clearly daytime when Sonic returns, implying that after he beat Robotnik, he ran non-stop all the way back to be with his animal buddies at home. So to recap, where does this leave us in our time frame? Well, due to the bright and sunny afternoon, Green Hill Zone takes place at noon. Marble Zone being a few hours later in the early evening takes place at 5 p.m. The beautiful sunset skies of Spring Yard Zone land us at 7 p.m. And we concluded Labyrinth takes place at 9 p.m. Starlight with its beautiful skies takes place at midnight, and Scrap Brain with its smoggy skies scattering the light puts it at 5 a.m. Then after that, Sonic runs all the way back to Green Hill at the same time he started the previous day. This means the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 took roughly 24 hours, or one day, for Sonic to beat. Now I understand my headcanon has its fair share of flaws, biases, and guesstimations, but I felt compared to share my silly little thoughts to anyone who cared enough to listen. If you have your own idea of how long the adventure took to beat, I'd love to read it in the comments below. And while this was not intended to be a series, if you want to see me do a time frame of Sonic 2, then just let me know. It was fun to replay Sonic 1, pay attention to the details, and look into one of my favorite games from a different angle. A huge thanks to all my Patreon and Kofi members for helping me make these videos, and remember, stay foxy.